Excellent. So my name is Thomas Ryan, and I'm an undergrad here in the UW Geography Department, and uh, I'm in the GIS track. Um, so what I'm here to talk to you about today is the Des Moines Food Bank. Uh, we did a project, or I, I and a group of three other members did a project uh, for the Des Moines Food Bank last spring. Um, the purpose of this project was to take a look at the, um, the client database that they had, which were all the people that they'd, um, ser they'd given services to as the food bank, so food essentially. Um, and then use that to figure out um, how accessible the food bank was uh, to the clients they were trying to serve in the area. And then two, to figure out how effective they were in serving the potential clients in the Des Moines service area. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, so how many of you guys have ever uh, volunteered or donated to the food bank? Pretty, pretty much ever. Have ever. <laughs> yeah, that's you. Um, yeah, so um, it was really great to get a chance to work with these guys, um, and they're a lot of fun. What they gave us was this giant spreadsheet, um, which was their client database. They didn't really have any data entry standards, but they had been taking records for the past three or so years. We focused specifically on their 2014 records, um, and we collected quite a bit from them. The big issue with this uh, database that was a CSV file is that it was very dirty. There were lots of lines that had random characters in them that wouldn't, uh, the addresses wouldn't geocode correctly. Um, and there was also a lot of uh, duplicate information in here. Um, so we had to write a Python script to deal with that so that we could um, geocode the data and put it into ArcGIS so we could actually do some analysis on it. Um, probably the most difficult thing about the Python script we wrote was that we had to uh, have it grab the address and then remove all the non-standard characters from it. And then there were a couple of common things where they would write street instead of st or uh, misspell avenue or something like that or boulevard that we would look for and then specifically try to correct so that we could get a higher rate of uh, geocoding. Because initially these raw files, only slightly less than half of the addresses in them actually geocoded correctly. So we had to go back and do quite a bit of work. We spent like a month <laughs> working on our script to try and fix all those addresses. And uh, we got pretty close. Um, generally we had about an 80 or so percent geocoding rate which we were pretty proud of. <laughs> um, yeah, and so that was the most difficult part of the project was working with the data set that we got from the food bank uh, because they, when they created it, they did not have it set up so we could use it. This is the first map we generated, which is an accessibility map. Each of these dots represents a specific client of the food bank and their home address. Um, what we're trying to show here is that there are dots that cover every single census block in the Des Moines service area, um, which means that in general, the food bank is accessible to everyone that lives in the area, which was the first thing that they wanted from us, an accessibility map. Um, then we looked at uh, where the likely people to use the food bank were, and that's along the uh, SR99 uh, Interstate 5 corridor, right? And that's where we see the areas of lowest medium household income. Um, yeah, so working from that, we decided to look at how effective the food bank was at um, <laughs> giving out its services to people from different blocks, from each of these census blocks. Um, and as soon as that runs out, we'll get to see it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty cool. OK, so what we have here is um, the usership, right? And that is the total number of clients the food bank got in 2014 divided by the population of that block. Right, so the highest block we had here was I think 22% of the people in that block had used uh, the, foods, the food bank services, the Des Moines food bank services in the last year. Um, generally, those blocks were closer to the physical location of the food bank, and they um, were low income, uh, unsurprisingly. Um, and what this allowed us to see was that there is some correlation between medium household income and uh, usage rates of the food bank. And what we decided would be most useful for the food bank was to see if we could look at those two variables at the same time and figure out what blocks would be best for the food bank to focus their outreach efforts in. So these are blocks that, are, that appear to have a pretty good chance of needing the services the food bank pr provides, but don't have a high usage rate of food bank services. Um, and there's this kind of ugly graph that'll come up in a few seconds here. <laughs> Right, so this is their best block, which was 22% usage with an average medium household income of just under $40,000. There are six blocks just below it. These blocks are the target area that the food bank worked on this summer in terms of doing their outreach and doing mobile services because these are the blocks where clearly there's a gap. 
in terms of participation in using the food bank services despite the predicted need in those blocks for those services. Yeah, and so that was the purpose of this project, was one, to show that the food bank was accessible throughout the service area, and two, to show that there were certain places where they should focus their efforts in terms of reaching out to the community. Yeah, and uh, that's pretty much it.